You know, my prayer tonight was what would Jesus say if he was here? It really doesn't matter what I have to say. <laughs> what matters is what Jesus wants to speak to us. I want to hear what Jesus wants to say to his church, what Jesus says, wants to say to my life. That's why I want to say, Holy Spirit, make my heart sensitive to his voice. The Bible says that his sheep know his voice. I want to know your voice. We have one life to live, and I want to live it for Jesus. I want to live it for him. I want to give it all, pour it all out for him. But in order to do that, we need to hear his voice and follow him. He says that we will not follow any other. And I believe tonight, if Jesus was standing here, this is what he would say to us. And also for those who are watching online or watching on television, I believe that this would be the words that Jesus would speak to you also. John chapter 20 verse 21, it reads, so Jesus said to them again. You know, many times Jesus needs to repeat things to us. And I believe as a movement, Jesus wants to speak to you again. And he said, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he has said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus will look at you with eyes full of love. Oh, his eyes are overwhelming, full of love, full of compassion, full of passion. His eyes are like fire. And he will say to you, as the Father sent me into this world, I am sending you to New Zealand. I am sending you to this nation. I am sending you to the nations of the earth. And he would also not only speak to you, he would breathe upon you. He would not send you alone in your wisdom and your knowledge and your power. He would breathe upon you and say, I'm not going to leave you orphan. I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm not going to send you by yourself. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit with you. And he would say, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Now the question is, how did the Father send Jesus how did the father send Jesus what did he send Jesus to do in this world the Bible says in Luke 4 18 Jesus stood up and he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me he has sent me to do this to preach good news to the poor the father sent Jesus to preach good news he sent Jesus to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus was a carrier of great news. We are also carriers of good news. We don't bring news of condemnation, of judgment. We're carriers of good news. And sometimes religion makes it seem like, oh, we have news of they are going to bring judgment and condemnation to people. But that's not the gospel. The gospel is good news. These are the words that Jesus would say. He would say, the kingdom of heaven has come near to you. The kingdom of God is within the reach of your hand. The scripture says that the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. You can experience righteousness, the assurance that your sins have been forgiven. You can experience peace. You can experience joy in this world. You can experience heaven in your life. And this is found in the Holy Spirit. Outside of the Holy Spirit, you will never experience it. Outside of His presence, you will not experience joy. 
outside of his presence, you will not experience the, the, the assurance that you have been forgiven, that you're justified. Outside of his presence, you won't experience true peace. You won't find it in this world. It's only in the Holy Spirit, in his presence, there's fullness of joy. This is good news. This is good news. You don't have to wait till you die to experience heaven. God wants to bring heaven to your heart by the Holy Spirit. Good news of eternal life. And then he was very clear on his message. He would say, repent and believe in the gospel. You must be born of water and of the spirit if you want to enter the kingdom of heaven. His message was a message of repentance. And his message was a message of faith in his sacrifice. Faith in the blood that he shed. If you only believe in Jesus, you will never experience his kingdom. And there are many people who believe in Jesus, but they don't have joy. They don't have peace. They don't live in, in righteousness because they must also repent. You must do both. You must repent and you must believe. There's people who repent, but they don't believe. Therefore, they don't experience his kingdom. The Jewish people, they repent of their sins, but they don't believe that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Therefore, they're not able to experience his kingdom. Jesus said there's two keys to enter, repent and believe. This was his message. This is not my message. This is good news. He's given you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. If you want to have joy, peace, righteousness, make a decision to repent from your sins and make a decision to believe and trust in the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross for you. And believe me, the Spirit of God will come inside of you. The Spirit of God will fill your heart with joy, with peace, with righteousness. Then Jesus would also manifest the power of the kingdom. He would heal the sick. He will heal all types of sicknesses and all types of diseases. He will deliver the oppressed. He will cast out demons. He will bring deliverance to people who were under torment, under suffering. Jesus will bring freedom, healing, sight to the blind, blind deliverance to the oppressed. Jesus not only preached, he also manifested his power. And he's sending us into this world to manifest his power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. And the Holy Spirit wants to give you power for you to be a witness, for you to heal the sick in his name. Power to destroy the works of Satan. Jesus manifested power. But Jesus also came to reveal to us the image of God. The image of the invisible God. The Bible says that Jesus... Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. The Bible says that he's the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. When we speak about image, we're speaking about his nature. If you saw Jesus, you saw God. Jesus came to reflect, to reveal to us what God is like. He came to reveal to us the invisible God. The God who created heaven and earth, the stars and the universe. He came to reveal him to us. So if we saw Jesus, we would see God. We would see his nature. Jesus was humble. He was lowly in heart. Jesus was kind. Jesus was gentle. Jesus was full of love. Jesus reflected on this world the nature of God. And God is not only calling you to preach. Anybody can preach. God is not only calling you to manifest his power. More important than all of that, God is calling you to reflect his image on this earth. 
God is calling you to reflect his nature on this earth. People need to see Jesus in us. People need to see the image of God in us. The scripture said by this people will know that we are his disciples. Not that we cast out demons. Not that we heal the sick. Not that we are good preachers. They would know that we're his disciples because the way we love. That's what makes us different than anybody else on earth. We love. We love the way he loved us. We love our enemies. We love those who curse us. We love those who persecute us. This is how people are going to know that we're disciples of Jesus. The way we love, the way we show his love. When people see us, they must see Jesus. The nature of God is described by the fruit of the Spirit. Love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, self-control. All these qualities describe the nature of the invisible God. And that's what God wants to reveal through our lives. The problem is this. That because of sin, the image of God was distorted in men. When God created Adam and Eve, the Bible says that he made them in his image, in his likeness. When God created Adam, Adam reflected the image of God on the earth. Adam was gentle. He was kind. He was loving. But Adam fell into sin. And because of sin, that image of God was distorted. And when God made Set, the scriptures tell us, Set was made in the image of Adam. The Bible says, let me find the scripture, that Seth, the son of Adam, was, and Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and named him Seth. So Adam was made in the image of God. Adam sinned. The image of God was distorted. Now Set was made in the image of Adam who was made in the image of God. Set sin. The image of God was distorted. And like this through generations. And what began to manifest in men is not the image of God but the desires of the flesh. And you begin to see fornication, adultery, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, reveries. Everything you see all around you. That does not reflect the image of God. That's not who God is. And God is calling us to reflect His image. Now here's the problem. That we cannot change ourselves. I want to be like Jesus. It is my desire to be like him. But I can't change my nature. I cannot change myself. Religion can put rules around you. You cannot steal, but you're going to continue to covet. You're not going to commit adultery, but you're going to continue to lust. You're not going to kill and murder, but you're going to become, you continue to have outbursts of wrath. That does not display the image of God. But the good news is this. That the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, transforms us from glory to glory into the image of Christ. This is the most powerful work of the Holy Spirit. The question is, how does he do this? 2 Corinthians 3.17. I'm sorry I read a lot of Bible, but I'm Baptist. We love the scriptures, you know. <laughs> we love the Bible. I was raised with the Bible, and I, 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 it's my heart to always stay inside the Bible. I don't get out of the Bible. <laughs> the Bible says this, 2 Corinthians 3.17. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. 
And 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says this, for it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. How are we transformed? We're transformed not by striving, but by beholding. This is amazing. This is amazing. You're transformed by what you behold. And the Bible says that God, by His Spirit, illuminates your soul. The fire of God turns a light inside of your soul. So that you may be able to behold the glory of God revealed in the face of Jesus. This is, this is amazing. But the Holy Spirit, ah, well, there was darkness before. Suddenly there's a light inside of you. And you're able to see the face of Jesus. You're able to see his glory in front of you. And as you behold it, there's a transformation that takes place. You're transformed by the Spirit from glory to glory into the image of Christ. I don't know if you ever felt this, but you come to a worship service like this and you close your eyes and you lift up your hands and you begin to worship Jesus. Like Jesus, name above all names, wonderful counsel, prince of peace. And you begin to worship and worship and you behold his glory. There's something supernaturally that's happening inside of you. As you simply behold him, you're being transformed. You're being transformed into his image. And then you leave and you're like, what's happening? Suddenly you feel compassion for the hurting. Suddenly you feel like hugging everybody. You're like, what happened to me? You're being transformed into his image. Suddenly you want to give when you were selfish before. Suddenly you want to pray for people before you didn't care about other people. And you're like, what happened to me? The Holy Spirit is transforming you into the image of Christ. He's showing you how he loves, the way he loved you to love other people. Suddenly you have peace. Suddenly you have all the troubles are the same. They haven't changed. But you have joy in the midst of the storm. You have peace in the midst of the storm. And you can explain it because it's something supernatural that the Spirit does inside of you. The question is, how do we behold his glory? How do we behold his face? I want to be changed. I want to be like you, Jesus. And I look at myself and there's things in my life that do not reflect who you are. Sometimes I'm selfish. Sometimes you might get angry, be quick to anger. And you realize, Lord, I want to represent you well on this earth. But I can't change myself. Religion can't change me. I need you to show me your glory. So I want to be like you. The Bible says that Moses saw tremendous signs, wonders, and miracles. Moses was used by God. Moses received the law from God. Moses had the presence of God. Man, amazing man of God. But he knew there was something more. So he said, Lord, please show me your glory. What Moses wanted was to see his face. He didn't want to just see his hands. He didn't want to just see his miracles. He said, I want to see your face. I want to know the God of miracles. I want to know the God of wonders. I want to know the creator. I don't want to just see his works. I don't want to just see his works. I want to know his ways. I want to know his face. And the Lord said to Moses, two instructions. First, he told them, you must ascend the mountain. He said to him, so be ready in the morning. Come up in the morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain. This is key. For you to experience his power, God descends to you. For you to experience his glory, you must ascend to him. For you to be saved, Jesus sought you. You didn't find him. He found you. He chose you. You're here because he chose you, because he sought you, because he found you. But for you to behold his glory, you must elevate your soul to him. You must lift up your soul to him. You must seek him. You must desire him. You must ascend the hill of the Lord. He doesn't reveal his glory to everybody. He reveals his power to everybody. But his glory, he doesn't reveal it to everybody. The Bible says in the, in the generation of Israel, 
Only Moses went up the mountain. And he said to the people, you were afraid because of the fire. And you did not go up the mountain. The people said, Moses, we are afraid of the fire. You go up the mountain, you talk to God, and you come down and you tell us what is he like. You tell us what he wants us to do and we'll obey you. You know why? Because they were afraid of the fire. Same thing happens today. There are people who are afraid of the fire of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, they never get to behold his glory. Because only the fire can illuminate your soul to see Jesus. Only in his light we see light. There's people when the Holy Spirit become, begins to move, instead of running to the Holy Spirit, they run the back door. It's okay. You're saved. You're going to go to heaven. The, the, the fire doesn't save you. Jesus saves you. His blood is what cleanses you. But if you want to see his face, if you want to see his glory, you will only experience it by the Holy Spirit. There are people who are afraid of the fire. This generation was afraid of the fire. Therefore, they didn't get to behold his face. In the generation of Jesus, multitudes experienced his power, but only three went up the mountain. The Bible says that Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart, apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And John said, we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Je John was transformed. He used to be a violent person. He wanted to kill the Samaritans, send fire on them, kill them, judge them. And after beholding his glory, he became the apostle of love. What happened to James? What happened to John? What happened to Moses, who was a man full of aggression and murderer, quick to anger, and then he became the meekest person on earth? What happened? They beheld his glory. They beheld his glory. And they were transformed by his glory. You must ascend the hill of the Lord. Psalm 24 says, the earth is the Lord in all his fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. And then the Holy Spirit asks two questions. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place? He who has a clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. This who will ascend the hill of the Lord? If you could ask, if you could hear the Holy Spirit, he'll be asking this question. Who will ascend the hill of the Lord? Who will stand in his holy place? Who's going to seek his face? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, to vain things, but lifted up his soul to Jesus. He will receive righteousness, blessings from God. Then the Lord said to Moses, you must stand on the rock. You shall stand on the rock, Exodus 33, 21. The only way to the Father is through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you want to behold his glory, you must stand on the rock who represents Jesus. Jesus has to be the rock of your salvation. Your foundations are his words. Jesus is the rock of your salvation. There are many people who seek God many different ways and they will never find him. We're in Mexico and there's these huge pyramids and people climb those pyramids and do all kinds of rituals up there and, and sing all kinds of songs and do all kinds of dances. They will never find God. There's only one way to God and it's through Jesus. He's the only way to the Father. There is no other way. You must say, I'm going to build my life, my foundation, like that song says, on Christ Jesus. I don't care what everybody else does. My foundation is Jesus. I place my faith and my trust in Jesus Christ alone. Those two things we do. The next thing is supernatural. The Bible says that God took Moses and he hid him in the cleft of the rock. When you lift up your soul to God, when you make Jesus the Lord and your Savior, the Holy Spirit will take you and he will hide you in his presence. He will hide you 
under the shadows of his wings. He will hide you in his secret place. He will hide you in this place where he reveals himself to you personally. He will reveal himself to you personally. He will speak to you one-on-one, -on -one, face to face. Then the Lord said to Moses, you cannot see my face. If you see my face, you will die. So he said, I'm going to cover you with my hand and I'm going to pass before you. I'm going to make all my goodness pass before you. I'm going to proclaim my name. And the Lord, the Bible says, descended on a cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And he said, the Lord, the Lord, God, merciful. This is his glory, his nature, his face. I'm merciful. I'm gracious. I'm long-suffering. I'm abounding in goodness and truth. I keep mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Moses, even though he was a great prophet of God, he was not able to see his face. Because as great as Moses was, he was a sinner just like you and just like me. And the Bible says that we have all sinned and we're separated from God's glory. Moses was separated from God's glory. God had to place his hand to separate himself from Moses. Because if he saw his holiness, he would die. And you and I, we have a blessing, a privilege that not even Moses had. The scripture says, we all with an unveiled face, behold us in a mirror the glory of the Lord. You and I, we're able to behold the glory of God with an unveiled face because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. When Jesus shed his blood, that which separated you from his presence, that veil was torn. And through his blood you have access into his presence. To the greatest privilege that any man or any woman could have on this earth. And that is to behold his face. Unveil. You can behold his holiness. You can behold his glory. You can behold his beauty. You can behold his righteousness. You can behold his goodness. You can behold his love. You can behold the countenance of his face. You can, ex you can behold the radiance of his face. And be transformed. When Moses was exposed to his f glory, his reaction was to bow down with his face to the ground and worship. When you're exposed to his power, you praise. You praise him because he does miracles, because he blesses you, because he saves you, because he delivers you, because he prospers you. When you're exposed to his glory, you worship. You worship him for who he is. You can tell those who've been exposed to his glory, they become worshipers. They become worshipers. You, you, you become enthralled by his beauty. Your heart gets captivated by him. Someone who's never been exposed to his glory during worship, they're like this. They're all, they're repeating the same song again and again, and they're bored. Why are they doing this? Come on, let's get to the next song. But when you sing his glory, you, you don't want to stop. Because your eyes have been enlightened. Your heart has been, the light of the spirit has shown in your heart to reveal the glory of God in the face of Jesus. He became a worshiper and then he repented from his sins. He said, I, now I have found grace in your sight, O oh Lord. Let my Lord, I pray, go among us. Even though we are stiff-necked people and pardon our iniquities and our sins and take us as your inheritance. When you're exposed to his goodness, that's what leads you to repentance. Not when you're exposed to hell. You're exposed to hell, you will repent, but the next day you will go back to the same thing. It will keep you safe very short. <laughs> Then after you forget about hell, you're going to continue to do the same. But when you're exposed to his love, when you're exposed to his goodness, you say, I want to live for this God. I want to love this God the rest of my life. I want to give my life for him. And then God made a covenant. And I believe this is the covenant that God wants to make with you. If you say, Jesus, show me your glory. Show me your face.
Change me. Transform me. I want to be different. I want to be like you. The Lord said, behold, I make a covenant before all your people. I will do marvels such as never been done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all the people among whom you are shall see the work of the Lord. For it is an awesome thing that I will do with you, says the Lord. It is an awesome thing that God will do with you. He will do marvels as have never been done before. If your desire is to be like him, if your desire is to reflect his image, he will manifest his power as never before. Let's all stand to our feet. King David said, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. He said, as for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. He said, as for me, King David said, everybody else can do what they want to do. But as for me, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to behold your face in righteousness. And I will only going to be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. That's why God said he has a heart after my own heart. With your eyes closed, right there where you are. Jesus is right there in front of you. He loves you with an everlasting love. He's so good. He's so kind. He's so amazing. He's so awesome. And he says, who will ascend the hill of the Lord? Who is going to stand in my holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. For you see, only uh, those of pure heart will see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And sin separates you from God, separates you from His glory. You can sing, you can shout, you can jump. But if there's sin in your life, you will not be exposed to His glory. That's why Jesus shed His blood. That's why He died. So that sin may be removed from your life. And so that you may be able to be reconciled with God and look to Him face to face. And talk to Him face to face. And know Him one on one. And be transformed, be changed. Not by a religion, but by the Spirit of God. If tonight you want to say, Lord, I want clean hands I want a pure heart I want you to cleanse me with your blood I want to forgive everyone who's hurt me I want to remove everything that's hindering me from entering into your presence and beholding your glory say God I don't want to leave this conference the same way I came I need you to transform me I need you to take the anger from me the depression the anxiety I want your joy I want to love like you love I want to be changed, God. I don't want to be selfish. I want to give like you give. I want to have your compassion in my heart, Lord. Transform me, change me, Lord. I, I need to be changed. I want to leave this place different, full of love, full of joy, full of peace. I want to leave this place reflecting who you are, carrying your gospel, manifesting your power. If that is you, right there where you are, lift up both hands as high as you can. And tell him, Jesus, give me clean hands. Give me a pure heart. Cleanse me with your blood. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. If you're watching online, if you're watching on television, right there where you are, 
Lift up your hands and say, God, give me clean hands. Cleanse my hands, cleanse my heart, cleanse my eyes, cleanse my ears, cleanse my feet. Wash me, Jesus. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you are the Son of God. Say, Jesus, breathe upon my heart. Fill me with your Spirit. Illuminate my soul with your fire. Illuminate. I want to see your glory. I want to see your face. Say, Jesus, change me, transform me. Place your compassion in my heart, your love in my heart. Fill me with your joy. I want to be humble. I want to be lowly in heart like you, Jesus.